Our opening hymn is hymn 459. Hymn 459. service as found on page 5. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto thee that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against thee by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore we plead for refuge to thine infinite mercy, seeking and imploring thy grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O most merciful God, who hast given thine only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy upon us, and for his sake grant us remission of all our sins. And by thy Holy Spirit, Increase in us through knowledge of thee and of thy will, 
and show obedience to thy word, to the end that by thy grace we may come to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, hath had mercy upon us, and hath given his only Son to die for us, and for his sake forgiveth us all our sin. To them that believe on his name he giveth power to become the sons of God, and hath promised them his Holy Spirit. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. Our song for today is a portion of Psalm 145, beginning with the 13th verse. The 145th Psalm, beginning with the 13th verse. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is faithful to all his promises, and loving toward all he has made. The Lord upholds all those who fall, and lifts up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food at the proper time. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving toward all he has made. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak in praise of the Lord. Let every creature praise his holy name forever and ever. Here ends the sound. Glory be to the Father. Glory.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, who by your Son have promised to give us whatever we shall ask in his name, we ask you, grant us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may make known our request unto you in faithful prayer, and desire of you that which is well pleasing to you and profitable for us lifting up holy hands without anger or doubting, and being firmly assured that you will hear our prayer. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and governs with you and the Holy Ghost, one true God, now and forever. Mother's Day, and Proverbs has an appropriate reading for the occasion, Proverbs 31, beginning with the 10th verse. A wife of noble character, who can find? She is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of his life. She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. She is like the merchant ships, bringing her food from afar. She gets up while it is still dark. She provides food for her family and portions for her servant girl. She considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her task. She sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. In her hand she holds the distaff and grasps the spindle with her fingers. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. When it snows, she has no fear for her household, for all of them are clothed in scarlet. She makes coverings for her bed. She is clothed in fine linen and purple. Her husband is respected at the city gate, where he takes a seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies the merchants with sashes. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive, and beauty is fleeting. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her the reward she has earned, and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. So far, the reading. We continue with hymn 505, is found in Christian worship. Hymn 505 in Christian worship.
Our Old Testament lesson is found in the book of Jeremiah, the 29th chapter, beginning with the 11th verse. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope in a future. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back from captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and places where I have banished you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back to the place from which I carried you into exile. So far, the Old Testament lesson. Our epistle lesson is from the book of James, the first chapter, beginning with the 22nd verse. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like a man who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But the man who looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues to do this, not forgetting what he has heard, but doing it, he will be blessed in what he does. If anyone considers himself religious and yet does not keep a tight rein on his tongue, he deceives himself and his religion is worthless. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Here ends our epistle lesson. Blessed are they who hear the word of God and keep it, Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel is written in the 16th chapter of St. John, beginning with the 23rd verse. Too is Jesus speaking to his disciples on Monday, Thursday. He says to them and to us, I tell you the truth. My Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Until now you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive and your joy will be complete. Though I have been speaking figuratively, a time is coming when I will no longer use this kind of language but will tell you plainly about my Father. In that day, you will ask in my name. I am not saying that I will ask the Father on your behalf. No, the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I came from God. I came from the Father and entered the world. Now I'm leaving the world and going back to the Father. Then Jesus' disciples said, now you are speaking clearly and without figures of speech. Now we can see that you know all things and that you do not even need to have anyone ask you questions. This makes us believe that you came from God. Here ends the gospel lesson. We confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed as found on page 12. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our next hymn is 522.
be to you in peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text is found in the book of 1 Kings, the third chapter, beginning with the fifth verse. At Gibeon the Lord appeared to Solomon during the night in a dream, and God said, Ask for whatever you want me to give you. Solomon answered, You have shown great kindness to your servant, my father David, because he was faithful to you and righteous and upright in heart. You have continued this great kindness to him and have given him a son to sit on his throne this very day. Now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David. But I am only a little child and do not know how to carry out my duties. Your servant is here among the people you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to count or number. So give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for this. So God said to him, Since you have asked for this, and not for a long life or wealth for yourself, nor have asked for the death of your enemies, but for discernment in administering justice, I will do what you have asked. I will give you a heart wise and discerning, so that there will never have been anyone like you, nor will there ever be. Moreover, I will give you what you have not asked for, both riches and honor, so that in your lifetime you will have no equal among kings. And if you walk in my ways and obey my statutes and commands as David your father did, I will give you a long life. Then Solomon awoke, and he realized it had been a dream. He returned to Jerusalem, stood before the Ark of the Lord's Covenant, and sacrificed burnt offerings and fellowship offerings. Then he gave a feast for all his court. This is our text. Dear fellow redeemed, the name for this Sunday is Rogate, and Rogate is a Latin word meaning to pray. Rogate reminds us of the gospel lesson in which Jesus promises to answer prayers asked in his name. Simply put, prayer is talking to God. God talks or speaks to us through the, through the pages of the Bible, his word. And so when we take time to meditate on God's word, when God speaks to us from those pages of the scripture, when we think about what God says to us, it often leads to a conversation with God. Something he said may lead us to ask for help, maybe to ask for a better understanding of something, or we might respond with praise and thanks for a blessing that God has pointed out to us. Meditation and prayer naturally go together. And here too we see the grace of God. By nature our old Adam is afraid of God. God in his mercy calls us to faith in him and has given us a new man who is not afraid of God because he sees God as a savior who loves us. And in the context of this love and grace, our God both commands us to pray and promises to answer our prayers. Jesus said, ask and it will be given you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. Prayer is a privilege, then, that we have because of the work of Jesus. He reconciled us to God, and that means we may now approach the throne of grace with confidence, with boldness. I've already mentioned that God speaks to us through the pages of the Bible. We don't need to look anywhere else for ways that God may speak to us. Everything that you and I need to know in order to get to heaven has already been revealed to us on the pages of Scripture. Having said this, the Bible at times does tell us that God at times sent, for example, an angel to deliver a message 
or use a dream to deliver a message. And this occurred more frequently on the pages of the Old Testament than now because the Bible wasn't completely written yet in those days. At the time of King Solomon, much of what we now call the Old Testament was not yet written. And so before us is an occasion when God spoke to Solomon in a dream. Solomon had spent the day in worship, at least a good part of it. He offered a thousand burnt offerings. I'm not sure how long that would take, but that's an awful lot of animals to offer. That night, then the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream. And note well, Solomon didn't seek or ask for this special appearance. It's clear that the Lord initiated this visit with Solomon. And so we read, At Gibeon the Lord appeared to Solomon during the night in a dream, and God said, Ask for whatever you want me to give you. Here the Lord was showing much kindness to Solomon. The Lord was encouraging Solomon to pray. And note he gave Solomon a very generous offer. Perhaps this in part was a test, if you will, from the Lord for Solomon. Think for a moment. If you could ask for anything that you wanted, what would you ask for? This need not be a trick question, but be careful. It could be a trick question. What would you ask for? Would the response come from our old Adam or from our new man? Keep in mind here that Jesus taught us to pray, not my will, but your will be done. Or if you will, Jesus put it this way in our gospel lesson, to ask in his name, if you will. To ask in Jesus' name, Jesus name simply means to ask in accord with what God wants. When we pray, keeping in mind the things that God wants, then the offer to ask for whatever you want will not be a problem for us. Solomon passed the test with flying colors. He prayed for a perceptive heart. And when I looked at this prayer, I noticed that Solomon was grateful, humble, unselfish. And it's clear that the Lord was pleased with this prayer. There are many things about this prayer that are, are good. Note well how Solomon begins. Solomon answered, You have shown great kindness to your servant, my father David, because he was faithful to you and righteous and upright in heart. You have continued this great kindness to him and have given him a son to sit on his throne to this very day. I find it interesting to note how Solomon begins. He begins by counting the blessings he had received from the Lord. And he uses the word kindness here. He has the word great in front of it because it's a special word for kindness in the Hebrew that points to God's great love, mercy, and faithfulness. God is faithful to his promises. Solomon recalls the great kindness uh, that, that, that uh, the Lord had shown his father David. And, and be, besides being faithful, that word also points to his loving kindness as well as his faithfulness to his promises. And Solomon sees that not only in what the Lord did for his father, but now in what the Lord is doing for Solomon. He acknowledges that he was sitting on the throne because of God's kindness. Well, I suppose we can say he inherited the throne from his father. 
But Solomon clearly sees it as something that was given to him by the Lord. When we pray, I think sometimes a lot of our prayers are simply asking God to do something for us or to give us something. And certainly there's a place for that. Solomon's prayer reminds us to count our blessings and to be grateful for the blessings the Lord continues to give to us. Solomon's prayer also shows humility before the Lord. And so we read, Now, O Lord, my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father. But I am only a little child and do not know how to carry out my duties. Your servant is here among the people you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to count. So give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? Solomon says he's only a little child. Now, he's not talking about his age. He was a full-grown man by that time. But it is a poetic way of saying that he has limitations and inadequacies, especially for the job of being the king of God's people. Solomon simply says, I do not know how to carry out my duties. This is a simple way of saying that he, he, he needs help for the job because the job is bigger than he is. He's obviously taking his position as king very seriously and he wants to rule well, especially, especially since it's God's people that he is ruling over. That then is Solomon's way of saying, I must rely on the Lord to help me rule well. So he asks for a discerning heart. Another translation says an obedient heart. Another says a perceptive heart. And the word behind all of these is, is the word hear or listen. Solomon is saying he wants to listen to God for guidance and to learn to distinguish, to understand the difference between right and wrong, or if you will, good and bad. Listening involves hearing, not only what God says, but also what the people are saying and, and not misunderstanding what they say. Communication can be difficult. What someone says and what I hear may not always be the same thing. Careful listening is always in place. Solomon wants to properly distinguish between right and wrong. And making such distinctions will be difficult at times because sin has clouded our ability to properly reason. Proverbs says, there is a way that seems right to a man, but in the end it leads to death. Human reason likes to play with words, and that what we do sometimes turns right into wrong and wrong into right when we play with words. It, 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 playing with words sometimes gets us nowhere or even gets us in trouble. Sometimes people play with words to hide their true intentions. Ninety years ago, there were some religious leaders who were saying, the Bible contains the word of God. That sounds good, until you place it beside the words, the Bible is the word of God. Those religious leaders would not say the Bible is the word of God and hope they could hide their unbelief behind the word contain. We need the Lord to give us a perceptive heart so that we can recognize weasel words when we see them. Today is Mother's Day. And that very word mother points us to God's design for the family. Father, mother, children have a well-defined relationship in God's design for the family. Earthly relationships, especially family, are not the product of social evolution, 
something that developed over thousands of years. There may be people who want to say that, but it's not true. God's design for the family is plain for all to see. A family begins with a marriage, one man and one woman. Often that coming together in marriage produces children. God's design is that the husband and wife work together to raise the children. And I don't mind saying that my father and mother were a team and taught us children both by the example that they gave and by what they said. And you can include in that what wasn't said. Uh, there were occasions where there were exceptions, but curse words was not the norm in our house growing up. I still, to this day, make use of the things that I was taught as a little child. And so not just Mother's Day and Father's Day, but every day is a good day for you and me to be grateful for the blessings that the Lord has given to us through our parents. However, there are voices and people in this world who do not like, like God designed for the family or who do not want to be limited by God's design for family and people relationships. Since the Lord instituted and defined what is marriage, I don't care if it's a court of law or some very learned men, man cannot change the definition of what is marriage. If I use the letters LGBTQ, and I'm not sh sure that I can say what they all stand for right away, I may have to think about it. I don't even know if I've got them in the right order. But what I do know is that these letters stand for a position that is in opposition to God's design. And the world will play with words to make such behavior sound like good behavior. And sometimes they will incorporate the word love in the way they define what they think is something new and better. Love is a word that has a wide range of meanings. Everything from that is totally selfish to something that is very unselfish. And here too then we need the help of our Lord to clearly distinguish between what is right versus wrong and what is real love versus selfish love. Solomon here is grateful, humble, and unselfish. He asked the Lord to help him to properly govern the Lord's people. Well, Solomon did not say my people, but the Lord's people. The Lord heard this unselfish tone in Solomon's prayer, and we read, So the Lord said to him, Since you have, not asked, since you have asked for this and not for a long life or wealth for yourself, nor have asked for the dis destruction of your enemies, but for discernment and ministering, and ministering justice. See, the Lord, in these words, is recognizing Solomon's unselfishness. The Lord gave Solomon a tremendous offer. Ask for whatever you want. And Solomon kept his request in unselfish bounds. And we read the Lord was pleased with Solomon's prayer that he prayed for a perceptive heart. And the Lord kept his promise. He gave Solomon great wisdom. So great that the fame of his wisdom spread far and wide throughout the world. And note also that we see here more of God's great kindness. He gave Solomon far more than what Solomon asked for. When Solomon realized what had happened, 
he woke up and realized it was a dream, he again worshipped the Lord. Solomon had received blessings. And you and I may count our blessings, and as we do so, we are moved to worship the Lord as well. Perhaps, uh, I think the word is epilogue here. This is Solomon praying near the beginning of when he was king. He reigned for many years. And over, the t over time, gradually his heart turned away from the Lord because he had married heathen wives. It's not clear to me, because I don't believe scripture says one way or the other, whether Solomon d d died an unbeliever or a believer. If we look at the book of Ecclesiastes as something he wrote in his old age, that would hint at the fact that he saw the error of his ways and turned back to the Lord. He concludes Ecclesiastes with the words, Fear God and keep the commandments. But I believe God didn't give us the answer on purpose. God doesn't want us to think that you and I can sow our wild oats while we're young and then when we're old, turn to the Lord. What if we don't get old and die before we have a chance to turn to him? That would not be a good thing. I see in God not giving us the answer then a very healthy warning. You and I should never think that we cannot fall away from the Lord. Our spiritual enemies are constantly work trying to take us away from him. But today we are reminded that you and I have been given the privilege of prayer so that you and I may storm the throne of grace. And here too we can ask him to continue to keep us in the Christian faith. And God will give us an answer that is far more than we ask. Amen. The peace of God that surpasses all our understanding shall keep our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. sing the offering hymn 207, 207 verse 6 this is the fifth Sunday after Easter and so uh, uh, Easter theme is, is still something that we can keep in mind hymn 207 verse 6 
O Jesus Christ, our crucified and risen Lord, accept our offering of thanks and praise. How great was your devotion to the task of our redemption. How totally unselfish was the sacrifice you made in our behalf. Our sins brought you pain and suffering and death. You brought us life and salvation. The death we owed, a holy and just God, you paid in full with your sacrifice on the cross. You exchanged your righteousness for our sins so that we can stand before God unashamed and fully accepted. In your glorious resurrection, we now find the certain hope of our own resurrection. And now, O Christ, your intercession to God in our behalf gives us courage and boldness to pray and confidence that our prayers are answered. Through the Holy Spirit, teach us to call upon your name without ceasing. Teach us what good things to pray for. May unbelief and doubt never keep us from praying or prevent our prayers from being heard and answered. Give us faith to believe that God accepts our prayers for the sake of your precious blood poured out for us. Help us to pray with contrite hearts that make humble confession of our sins. Come with your divine blessings, O Holy Redeemer, that all who believe in you may in your blessings find complete satisfaction. Our Savior, grant that our love for you may never be replaced by a lust for the things of this world. Keep us from yielding to soul-destroying sins. May the Holy Spirit keep us from trusting in anyone or anything to save us beside your merit and sacrifice. Help us always to walk in the Spirit, that led by him we may follow your pure example and thereby testify to the source of our faith and love. Forgive every occasion when we have failed to trust you, to love you, to keep you in our thoughts, to serve you, to continue in your word, to pray to you, to praise you, or witness about you to others. Cover us with your righteousness. How it comforts us to know that you are our ever-living King who reigns supreme, hearing and answering our prayers, and causing all things to work for our good, yet even those things that frighten and afflict us. All praise to your name in earth and heaven, precious Jesus. Amen. Amen. And since today is Rogati Sunday, please turn to him 455 and we will sing the Lord's Prayer.
blessed Lord, who has caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant that we may in such wise hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that by patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace, never hold fast, the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Ghost, one true God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Amen. Closing hymn is hymn 579. And uh, anyway.